Hey guys, Jason 27 here doing a movie review and the movie I'm going to be talking about is Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. I have finally got a chance to see it with a friend of mine. So we've been seem to be seeing a lot of movies together lately, which is quite unusual because normally I go see it by myself. But um, he wanted to see it. I was a little bit hesitant, but I said, what the hell. Um, and seen it, so now I can give my actual honest opinion about this film um, and how I... Um, view it and compare it to the first one. Now, I might as well just go out uh, to limb and say I did not like the first one at all. I actually hated uh, the first one pretty much. I think I gave the film a half a star and that was because of some very, very small, small um, details that I did enjoy about it. But other than that, it, the movie was a piece of trash. I mean, it was just an awful, awful film. And it really, I don't think too many people have too much high hopes um, for the sequel. Um, in fact, uh, to no surprise, a lot of people um, actually hated this film, especially some of the reviewers that I, I watched. I think only one reviewer, um, two actually, uh, that I watch a lot. Um, I think um, John Channelbash and Chris Duckman actually gave it some good, good impressive praises. Um, they also gave uh, some not so pleasant praises as well, but that was because of the stuff that I'm going to be touching in as well. Um, as for me, this was a better sequel. I actually think this was a much better film, and that's largely because they finally got um, the, the features right with Ghost Rider. Um, the, the skull was pretty much charcoal, you know, a burning skull the way a skull should be, and not the way they did it the last time where it was obviously... Um, they just basically slapped some white skull that didn't make any sense. Um, I actually thought action base wise was better. I thought the action scenes was portrayed way better than they was portrayed in, this, in the first film. Um, Nicolas Cage, uh, his acting, <laughs> uh, how can I describe it? If you saw The Wicker Man or you saw some of his films where he's just being a um, total lunatic. I think that's what you're pretty much going to get from this film. It's definitely a film um, that betrays that kind of um, of uh, acting that Nicolas Cage is always seem to be doing nowadays. But he's actually not bad at it. It's actually pretty entertaining in some cases. In other cases, it just gets you to roll your eyes a little bit because it just didn't make any sense. Um, but overall, it is a better sequel. Mind you, it's not a good movie. I mean, it, it really has a lot of problems. And I guess it goes with the fact is that none of it, besides from Nicolas Cage, which is the main star, I didn't much care less about anybody else in this film. I didn't care about the plot because the plot I've seen already hundreds and hundreds of times. In fact, they actually borrowed one element from a recent film um, that, um, that had, no, I'm sorry, it can't be recent, but a film that was in a franchise a while back. Um, especially if you watch the X-Men um, trilogy, you pretty much recognize all the bet that's where it came from. At least I recognize it. Um, and this film was trying to be, to be one campy and another one too seriously, and it doesn't really work with this kind of film. You've got to choose to be dark and gritty and balls to the wall, or you're going to have to be campy and tongue-in-cheek. And I think this film, at one, at the first half, it was mostly tongue-in-cheek, and then they... I think the second half, it tried to be serious, and it really was, and for a film like this, you really, it didn't work, it didn't work at all, um, my friend was bored by this film, he did not like this film at all, he hated this film, um, I wouldn't say I was bored by it, I was into this film for the first half of the film, I actually enjoyed it, um, the story was pretty much basic, um, Donnie Blaze went into hiding, um, because um, he, he really couldn't control the, um, the, the demon as well from the curse. Um, pretty much it gave us some good backstory and animation feature no less. Pretty impressive. Um, but he's hiding uh, you know, in another kind of in a desert country. Um, and he, somehow he got tracked by another guy who seriously know where he was. Um, it said that, um, that he needed to find this boy because he uh, pretty much has one half of Satan's powers. Or at least that's what I'm. That's what I'm interpreting. Uh, and he wants to inhabit um, this boy's body. Then if he does, they become more and more powerful. Because in this movie, and this is pretty much where I really was not too feeling it. The devil 
Zack Sane, whatever you want to call him, is weak in this movie. I mean, he is absolutely weak. He's pretty much a non-factor throughout this film. Uh, and that's because he took on a body form. And for some reason, I think they explained it, that he um, is weak on the earth. Um, he, he, that's his, never his strength. And I'm kind of wondering, that doesn't really make any sense, but um, according to this movie, he's actually weak. And the only way he can get strong is if he take on another vessel that is actually stronger, which means this kid who's supposed to be his son. Um, basically, Antichrist um, wonderful. So he's made a deal with this guy. Um, if you bring the boy and bring him to safety, that, that he will lift the curse from him. That explain how he was doing it, but it, it, it pretty much went down to um, down later on the film. So he's looking for this boy as well as these hunters looking for him and Satan looking for him. And I think the one scene where you saw where you saw the Ghost Rider for the first time, he's flying in the air and he tracked the boy down because. According to this, the Ghost Rider within him can actually sense his presence and therefore can find him. Um, and he does in the scene. It was a very interesting scene, but then it does something weird. Um, when he gets shot by a rocket launcher, like twice in this in this movie, um, he's automatically in the hospital. Did they explain where he came to the hospital? Didn't explain why he was there. He was just in the hospital. And you pretty much knew it had something to do with the boy. You just didn't know how. You didn't know how it really affected him. Pretty much into the middle. Um, but he's there, and the coincidence, his mother's has to be there as well. And I guess that made it. I, I, I guess that's when the film pretty much, excuse me, that's when the film really pretty much became more tongue in cheek. Um, He's pretty much searching for the boy. He actually finds the boy, um, and basically uh, just beat the living hell out of all these all, all these bad guys. T went to some kind of contractor, and that became uh, a ghost fighter vehicle. Good special effects, by the way. Um, and just when he was chasing the he was chasing the, the mother and the boy, and pretty much I think he was about to suck the mother's um, soul when the boy is on the stop. And as he got closer. Um, the boy did what I like to call the X-Men special, um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, in the X-Men movie, um, um, that's the least of last stand, um, the, one of the main mutants that they, everybody was hunting down was uh, this kid, and his main mutant power was to turn all the mutants normal. And in this case, um, the boy had the power to actually turn Johnny Blaze Moral, um, meaning, meaning that you know he was stripping him of his powers. The more close he came to him, um, and that was the uh, that was pretty much the gist of it. And of course, from there on, I pretty much knew that somewhere down the line, uh, he was going to be uh, a big factor in the movie where he was going to give back Johnny Blaze's power because he loses his powers briefly um, after he brought him to this sanctuary safe house, which was run by um, Mr. Highland himself, Christopher Lumbert. Uh, which, in my opinion, was completely wasted in this film. Um, he should have. You can put any character in this movie; um, it would not make much of a difference. He was completely wasted. He barely had a few lines, um, and he was going just like that. Um, so it really doesn't. Uh, to me, that really was the major disappointment. I actually wanted to see him in more roles, but they, they didn't give him enough to, to, to do. And um, <coughs> I just felt they could have given somebody else. Um, not to see he's still around, though, but. <laughs> That, that's pretty much a waste of time, but in my if you ask me. Um, and apparently, um, he lost his powers, but his uh, in one of the during before the end scene, he got he got it back because the kid gave back his powers. And we ended up probably being one of the most unusual chase scenes um, that I had. He pretty much, you know, you see him come smashing cars, but overall it was a disappointing chase scene it was a disappointing end climax because really nothing much happened it was too easy for a ghost rider really honest, to be honest with you there was this character named decay which i kind of wish they would have done more with that character because he looked a badass i mean he, this really could have been a character could have easily been a um, a rivalry for um for ghost rider but um fortunately he was my nuke he was pretty much a comic relief villain and uh, and you know, he really didn't give anything new to the story. I mean, really much. But I guess what disappointed me the most about this film, um, the fight between, or lack thereof, fight between the devil and Ghost Rider. Uh, where the Ghost Rider, you know, threw him up in the air, 
I basically said, uh, you go back to, uh, go back home, and just threw him down, and all you see was Satan going way, way, uh, <laughs> way down to the, pretty much the ends of the earth, and, um, I, uh, I was disappointed in that, I expected more better than that, um, Satan looked like a wimp in this, in this film, I, I really didn't felt very compelled by the ending, and the film did end, you know, um, Pretty much with him finding out that the, that the ghost rider that was in him was actually a fallen angel that was corrupted, and he was supposed to be this, um, you know, this um, this angel who can, uh, that still had good in him. It, it just basically it just basically totally went 180 on the story, and I guess that's because they wanted to change it up a bit. Um, this is a sequel, don't make no sense about it, but they really wanted to, in some way, just con discontinue their. Um, their connection with the first one, whatever happened to completely moved away from the first one, but yeah, it, it's one of those um, films that you just basically scratch your head and said, what? Um, like I said, it's a better it's a better sequel, I, I mean, there are some good things about it, I liked, um, it was, uh, it has some good action to it, um, I actually liked the action scenes, um, the the animation was impressive. I actually thought the animation was well done, and I think the um, the camera angles that they've gotten for the film was pretty impressive, were pretty damn good. The problem is um, that, um, and this is more on the studio's fault than I think we have the directors, because I do believe they was pretty much tamed to keeping it um, as um, teen friendly, if I like to call it, as possible. Um, but. The script wasn't really well polished at all. I mean, there was a lot of stuff in this in the script that I didn't like. And again, the characters were the size of um, of uh, Nicolas Cage. Nobody else I really cared about. Um, the devil was boring. Um, he was the most boring character in all. He was pretty much cliche. Um, none of the characters had any memorable moments to it. Um, the kid, I, I can't really say anything about the kid. He was just uh, um, stone. I mean, he wasn't, you know, you know, bad, bad, but he was like, okay, well, he just there to be there. He was, he, it really wasn't no memorable moments. I mean, um, there was just a one scene where it looks like he was going to go all demon on Nicolas Cage, but that was quickly, you know, squashed the minute he lost his powers. And next thing you know, they're in the dining room talking. Um, there were just, there were puns <coughs> that really didn't need to be in this movie. Um, and that's the, that was the main issue. Like, why are they making puns? It's not even funny. Why put that in there? Um, puns that you don't normally expect to be there, um, but they put it there. Um, the pacing, it was okay. It wasn't terrible pacing. It's just, like I said, um, the film, it became tongue in cheek for the first, you know, half, and then they tried to be serious and dark in the second half, and I think it just didn't work. Uh, it, it just didn't work, especially for this film. Um, again, it's not a film, it's not a good film. But it's not a terrible film. I, I did find some fun moments. Um, I guess one of the main things I, I, I always have a problem with the Ghost Rider movies, one and two pretty much, is the fact is when I think of Ghost Rider, um, I think of dark, edgy, old walls to the walls, over the top film where it is it's bloody, it's violent, um, and pretty much a red R film. Um, I don't think it works good as a teenage film. I don't know why Marvel consists of trying to make it into a more family-oriented film when clearly Ghost Rider is not meant to be um, for everyone, especially if you read the comics, I, I, especially the graphic comics. I'm talking about the standalone graphic comics. It's pretty evident that there's this, this more to Ghost Rider than what is being presented in the movies. And I will say for the directors, they at least they tried there was effort put into this movie, um, much more than the first one, where you can I can safely say there was no effort whatsoever to betray Ghost Rider as correctly. Um, there was lazy writing in the first uh, film, lazy acting, terrible acting, even from one of the guys who I like, Sam Neil, Sam um, Neil, um, Sam Elliott. I'm sorry, Sam Elliott. I actually enjoyed his acting. He was completely wasted in the first film, at least with this film. Nicholas Cage had more fun with this film. It looked like he was putting more effort. Um, the the scenes were more intense um, in terms of um, action and pacing. You can tell they really wanted to um, to give us a high quality film. And for the most part, if you were a um, just a popcorn guy who liked to you know eat popcorn and enjoy the entertainment film for the sake of entertainment, I think it does its job to a certain degree. 
Um, but if you're a big time fanboy of this film, I doubt you're gonna like this movie only because it doesn't really betray Ghost by the way <coughs> you would expect it from um, from the comics. Um, it really don't, um, and and that's the problem with this film. It really has really have not done a very good job of you know representing the uh, representing this uh, character very well, um, at least in my opinion. Um, but in all, my reading for this film is two. Um, like I said, there were some better moments. I did enjoy the first half. I really, really did. I just the second half, it just don't, it just dwindled on me quickly. Uh, I never really recovered. Uh, and the fact that I really didn't care about the plot, didn't care about the acting at all in this film. I mean, the only actors, reception of Nicolas Cage, was was easily forgettable. Um, and the fact that he, that they had. Not done very. They done okay with the editing, but to the to a certain degree. And then the other degrees, you kind of wonder what the hell just happened and why was um, this was going on and how come they cut to this so quickly. It really is a film that you just basically. Uh, if if you want to waste time, is this is a pretty a decent film to waste time. But if not, especially if you're a uh, comic book fanatic, you might not want to see this film too much. But that's just my opinion. Um, it has its moments, and that's it. It just has some good moments. I didn't hate it like a lot of other people did. I know a lot of people did not like this film. My friend fell asleep on this film, so he uh, I know he didn't like it, but, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, unfortunately, I, I want it better more, but, but for what it's worth, um, it is a much better sequel than the, than the, first, than the first one by far. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, until then, this is Jason7 saying take it easy.